Uh, now for our broader conversation, in line with the calls from Right Honourable Clayton Zobun on the need to protect consumers, ADBN Television had an exclusive interview with the acting Executive Vice Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, FCPC, as it pledges to protect Nigerians and protect consumers in cartel formations, price gouging, and other sharp practices within informal and formal market sectors. Let's take a listen to this exclusive interview, and we'll come back to other segments on Morning Express this Wednesday morning. Stay with us. Well, on the issue of the discrimination, really, uh, we cannot say that we have any confirmation yet because this supermarket is based inside the housing estate. So there is a facility manager uh, in the estate. And that facility manager has a gate that is now manned by security men. Those security men want to know what business you are coming into their estate for before they allow people to enter. And that's how the application now came up. Usually is what we need to confirm is, is it the owner of the supermarket that gave this instruction to the uh, security guards that once people come in and they want to enter the estate and go into the supermarket, you must allow only non-Nigerians or only Chinese and not allow Nigerians? Or is it a decision that the facility manager themselves took? Or is it something that the security guard himself now decided on? So this is an ongoing investigation that we have to really look at and find out. But uh, a pointer would be uh, the visitor's book. They have a book in which they now list everybody that goes into and out of that estate and the times of uh, entry and uh, exit. So if by any chance we find out that there are a lot of Nigerian names going to that place and out, then we don't have any reason to think that there is any sort of discrimination going on there. But if by any chance only Chinese nationals' names are in the book, the visitor's book, then we confirm these allegations that are against them. It's an ongoing investigation, as I said earlier, and uh, we'll keep the public abreast of whatever findings we have in that space. There's, there's some assertions also going around on social media that the pricing of items in that supermarket was strictly in Chinese foreign currency and no Nigerian prices as labeled on their products. Is that true, sir? Uh, you see, uh, historically, what actually happened was when we got that complaint, it is our mandate to go and really go on a fact-finding mission and find out what is really going on. All these allegations that uh, have been leveled against them, is it true? They have to have the right of reply. So when we went there, unfortunately, the owner of the supermarket locked up and uh, ran away. All I forced to reach her through the phone number that was given to us by the uh, facilities management field, sent uh, text messages, there was no response. So we had no choice and we had to deliver our summons. So we just pasted the summons as required by law and photographed it that it has been uh, pasted there. Once you paste the summons, it's as, as uh, good as delivered. So all we asked for is for the woman, owner of the supermarket to come and explain this uh, infractions that have been leveled against her. And she did. We gave her 48 hours with her to come to the FCC and she did come. And that's for the first time when we had access to that uh, Supermarket, I would even call it a grocery store, really, because it's not big enough to be termed a supermarket. Yes, all the products in there are mostly Chinese. Uh, the labeling uh, is in Chinese. The price uh, that are fixed on the labels are also in Chinese. And there are also allegations through the CCTV footage that we have seen so far that uh, Chinese currency is used to buy products in the supermarket. All these are against Nigerian laws. First of all, issue of discrimination is a basic constitutional right, not even a, an act of the FCPC. So we cannot allow the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to be uh, thrown under foot or anywhere to go against it. And we have to find out what actually is going on. Issue of uh, doing business, not using the Niger, is against the CBM policy. So much noise has been made by the CBN over the couple, last couple of years, even in instances of uh, some schools that uh, were found to be charging in dollars. Uh, and not talk of this one that uh, you have to change to yuan before you can buy 
anything in the Nigerian market, it doesn't make sense. So these are things that, yes, we're investigating. We may not have the actual law that uh, uh, prevents such a practice, but that's why we collaborate. That's why I act, ask us to collaborate with other regulatory agencies, in this case, the CBN. CBN are the financial regulations of this country. So they will tell us what, it, uh, what the law says and uh, once found guilty, what the sanctions are going to be against the supermarket. But it's still a work in progress. Uh, the lady came back yesterday and uh, we, she now has, of course, she has to interpret her because she doesn't speak English. Uh, so we have been talking with both her and the interpreter. Now she's having issues with her interpreter and as we said, she wanted to change the interpreter. So that's it. Maybe that change will go forever. So that's why we're now talking to the Chinese embassy so that they will help us out in this investigation. First of all, by telling her to cooperate with us. We don't bite. All we do is to try to fact find. So all we are trying to find out is what practices are going on in the supermarket and whether they abide by our own regulations and rules or not. So let her cooperate with us in that investigation. That's one. Secondly, the embassy should also uh, go ahead and help us to find a, an interpreter that will be acceptable to the woman. So at this time around, when we sit and uh, take whatever the dictations uh, we get from her would be what would uh, be in her own interest or her own belief that her interest has really been protected because we have to give her that right. It's her own right too. And in as much as we can, we make sure we deal with this thing as fast as possible because it's now getting to be more or less a diplomatic issue. Since the embassy is coming into it, the Chinese Chamber of Commerce and Industry is coming into it, and you know that over the years, we have had a very, very cordial relationship with the Chinese. And we all know how strict they are with their own rules. Go to China, break the rule. You know that you have broken a rule. So we cannot allow them to come here, break our own rules, and get scot free with it. No. And we have made that abundantly clear with the Chinese embassy, and they have also promised to ensure that whatever it is that we do, they will support us to do the right thing. Now, so that it doesn't seem as if it's peculiar to the Chinese supermarket alone, we we'll recall that uh, some months down the line, Saad store also infringed, but we saw that there was some sort of understanding on the part of the FCCPC and the store was reopened. Mm -hmm. Would you like to state for the record how that was how, how that was made possible? Okay, what happened with, the, with that store, as you mentioned, is the issue of false, misleading and deceptive practices. You see, you cannot go to a shelf and say product A costs 1,000 Naira. And then by the time you come to the till, as a customer, you go and pick that item, come to the till to pay, it's a different price. 1,200, 1,500, sometimes 2,000. So when we went on our spot check and we found out that is what practice was going on in that particular, it's, it's not peculiar to Sahad really. It's uh, a practice that most supermarkets go into. In fact, those supermarkets don't even display price at all. It's when you pick the uh, product you want to buy and now go to the to find the price. If it's uh, affordable, you buy. If it's not, you take it back. And that's not the practice that is acceptable to us. It's uh, a requirement that you must display your prices at all market supermarkets. So we insisted that they should come and explain to us why they engage in such practice and uh, let us find a way around it so that we can guide them on the facts of the case and see how they can make amends. They refuse to come. So we gave them a second chance. They sent in a lawyer. A lawyer, do you know what you are here for? You came to defend the stores? Yes. Uh, did they give you the facts of the case that you are coming to defend? No. What do you know about the case? Nothing. So in that case, it means, uh, they don't even take us seriously. So we took our time, uh, got our search warrant, of course, from the court, then went on an early morning with a police cover to... Uh, enforce our law and uh, true true we went to their shelf picked identical pieces of kuli kuli and found out that uh, one cost 700 naira another one 900 another 1100 same product same data production same manufacturer everything so that means there are that practices are going on we proved to them once we prove that our next line of action would be seal because only through sealing that would 
prove to them that we are very serious and we'll prove them to come to us. So they came to us, uh, gave us uh, a letter that says that uh, they will be of good behavior as well as cooperate with the commission in doing what we are supposed to do. I uh, will put them under surveillance for the next three months since then and we have been going there on almost a weekly basis, not really on a weekly basis, not on the date to be announced, but to be announced to them, we just go spot check and find out how they are doing with uh, making amends to that malpractice. And we are happy to announce they have gone over 95% uh, in compliance now. And more importantly, the message has gone out clearly to all other supermarkets, not only in Abuja, indeed in the whole country, that this is an agency that will allow this kind of uh, false, misleading, and deceptive practices to go on in supermarkets the, the country countrywide. And uh, that is what we are very happy about because now we go on our spot checks and we find that things are improving. But we keep telling Nigerians and urging Nigerians, whenever I go to any supermarket and find out that such practices are still going on, please let us know and we'll do what you're supposed to do. Now, it's also quite commendable the role the FCCPC has engaged in mass media, especially on social media. Mm -hmm. uh, the visit to Massacre Market in Nasarawa State also captures a visit to the informal market sector. Uh, what, what informed the commission in, in direction with that? And there are more coming, really. Uh, the one that uh, really got to me was when uh, there were some complaints that, okay, what, what was the commission doing all this while, while we were asleep? We're not asleep. Uh, the thing is, we don't go into things blindfolded. We make sure we do our market studies and find out what's going on before we now look at the results of what, whatever that market studies throws up and it's based on that that we do what we do. So we're doing these market studies. We're trying to find out what is happening in the market. We're trying to find out from the farm to the fork what happens to food items when they're uh, in transit. And the findings are very ridic ridiculous because the costs are just plenty on the seller and uh, in the long run, of course, it comes to the consumer. Uh, first of all, talk of uh, the multiple charges, uh, taxes that you have to pay on the way, local governments, uh, you cross along the way as you come from maybe Benue or Taraba, coming towards Abuja or going to Lagos. And apart from that, look at all the checkpoints, look at the condition of the roads, look at the cost of fuel, look at the cost of diesel, look at the uh, condition of the vehicles themselves. God help you, you have a trailer load of tomatoes and the vehicle breaks down the way, what happens? So these are things that we have taken into cognizance. But more importantly, we found out that at the market level itself, there are a lot of uh, distortions going on. Markets don't uh, operate freely as they should because some uh, sellers have formed themselves into associations. Uh, a pure water sellers association, a yam sellers association, grains sellers association. So what these associations do is uh, they don't allow free entry into the market. If you come in as a freelancer with your products from the farm and uh, you decide to come into the market to sell eggs, for instance, if without being a member of the Egg Sellers Association, you can't do that. And you cannot come in and sell at your own price. You have to either sell to them, to sell at their own price or leave, or belong to the, uh, so belong to the association, pay their dues, become a member, and then, of course, sell at their price. We have made it abundantly clear that's uh, one of the essences of our going to massacre market. To the management of the market, that these associations have formed cartels, and cartelling is not uh, allowed in accordance with the law. So they either stop that practice or wouldn't have a choice but to disband them. And we went a little further to that. Uh, so yesterday we called in the management of the market and graciously, the chairman of Koru local government came along with them uh, in his two shoes, both as a head of the local government and also as a farmer himself. And the kind of information we got from them is something that would really help us in this investigation that's ongoing. And this effort that we are putting on to make sure the prices of goods and commodities come down in this, in this country. Uh, these associations, whether we like it or not, have form themselves into these cartels that we have to break. So what we are doing now is giving them serious warnings that, look, we are, we are found out that this is what you are doing, you are a first-time offender, so don't do it again. 
By the time we come back next time and we find out that you are a habitual offender, we'll apply the full wrath of the law. And we made it abundantly clear yesterday to Masaka. And now we are going further. We have enabled all our zonal offices to uh, go to all the states in which they operate. By the way, we have zonal offices in the southwest, in Oshubo, in uh, the southeast, in Oka, south house in uh, Port Harcourt, in the northwest, in Kasena, north central in Mina, and northeast in Bauchi. We also have state offices in Lagos and in uh, uh, Lagos and Kano. So we have enabled all these offices to per state go into two informal, informal markets and two supermarkets and find out what practices are going on there. If they are proving cases of price fixing, price gouging, and any other practices that distort the market, we'll get these reports and we'll do what we're supposed to do. In the same manner, we would enable them to hold meetings with this uh, market management and tell them according to the law, cartels are not allowed and this is what the associations are. So either as a market uh, management, disband these cartels by yourselves or by the time we come back, we'll do it for you. Now, we've also noticed across various sectors of the economy a significant hike in commodity prices and services of goods as well. Mm. And many blame it on the inflationary rates, headline inflation well over 33.32% to inflation well mm. over 40%. And many have also talked about the improvement in the exchange rates, whilst Nigerians continue to lament that service providers across sectors are ignoring these gains and still keeping prices as they continue to rise astronomically. Price gouging is something that you have to scientifically prove. It is, it's not easy. And by any chance, we have never deceived ourselves that it is easy. But we have the experience because during COVID, we went into supermarkets and we saw what the practices were. In the day, uh, prices of hand sanitizers and masks may rise three, four times. And uh, the oil is rising, never coming down. So when we ask why, of course, it has to do with just demand. So demand is another factor that should make prices go astronomically high the way they are going. This time around is to do with uh, the $3 dollar exchange rates. Uh, others argue because of removal of subsidy, some argue because of cost of diesel and other such factors. But it's something that is very easy to find out, at least in the formal market, because you go to their stores, go into their books, find out on what date these products were bought, what was the rate of exchange on that date, what the rate of exchange today, what the profit margin that you put onto it, and based on that, why should you be selling at such a price? If you cannot scientifically prove why, then of course, we have to force you to do something about your prices. We are not a price control agency. We don't control prices. We don't tell people how much to sell their product because we don't know at what price you brought in your products if uh, they are imported. We don't know at what price you manufactured if you are manufacturing. But we look at the market forces and try to get a balance. This balance is uh, to eliminate all these cases in which people abuse their dominant market position, uh, people form cartels, people run, do, do monopoly, and things like that. These are all in our purview, and we do our very best to make sure that we remove them from the marketplace. Now, the telecommunications sector is one that has lamented the need to hike its price, but whilst waiting for commission from the NCC, has not taken a decision. They've also pointed fingers in the direction of Starlinks entering the data market and they say it's a competition that they would need to hike their prices in order to stay in the profit margins. I don't know if you agree with that line of thought or what's the decision of the commission in regards to telecommunications? As you said, NCC. So you see there are sector regulators and uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, NCC is one of the sector regulators that regulates anything communications. So the service providers have realized, of course, that uh, that's the sector regulator. They have gone to him. And that's the sector regulator that has the core competence to look at all the arguments that they have brought up and weigh in view of all the uh, variables that have come into play now. Is it proper for uh, them to get a better price or not? The decision is really on the NCC for now. We only come into it when at the point of that decision be reached because we have an, an understanding with them and we always work together. 
And whenever they want to do something that uh, affect the consumer, such as the hiking prices, of course, they uh, talk to us and we judge all and find out ways and means of doing it. In the, on the issue of the DSTV Go TV, I'm sure that's where we are going next. So yes, let, 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 next let, let me preempt you before you go there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, be it uh, DSTV, realizing that, uh, of course, we have a say and uh, we also have a stake whenever costs of uh, their products and services go up. Wrote us a lengthy letter, four pages, that now explained the, the, the position in which they have found themselves. Uh, electricity has gone up, of course, and they have to buy spare parts, dollars, reason. They had to uh, buy diesel, at the cost is going so astronomical, and all the other things that they listed in that letter. We looked at it, and we are now saying, look, uh, come, let us talk about all the things that you have spoken, and let us see how you can defend if that hike is inevitable. And if it is, by all means, would allow you to go ahead. That's the stage we were in uh, before. And if it is not, then we'll tell you why we, we feel it is not. But more importantly, you have to improve on some of your services. This pay-per-view that we have sat down and agreed uh, about earlier, in which you consider that four times each year, on a quarterly basis, you allow uh, your subscribers to suspend their services and the, the course will not be running until they come back and uh, continue. So you have not made any noise about that. Nobody even knows that there is such an agreement. Nobody knows that they have, you now have such a, a concession. So this is a thing that we look at. Also, people have been complaining the repetitiveness of your programs. You keep repeating. People have been complaining that you force them to buy channels on a bouquet, channels that they don't need. So why don't you look at all these things and try to make them better? If you make your services better, then price increase will be justified. So let us look at these things holistically and reach a decision. But other people feel, no, you shouldn't have anything to do with it. After all, prices of other commodities went up. What did you do about it? You didn't talk about cement. You didn't talk about rice when it went up. Why are you not talking about uh, DST? Because they want to increase rates. Because of the, first of all, the uproar. You have seen how the public responded to this planned hike. And you have also seen what the uh, Senate House of Reps, Senate, is it? Senate has done uh, regards suspending this hike until they have a Georgia. You have also seen what our tribunal did only yesterday by suspending it also to have a hearing before they can now approve it. So these are issues that, if followed scientifically, they are very easy things to maneuver and find their way out of. It's not as if we control prices, we don't. But we make sure that the market space is even so that people can come in, do their business, and don't abuse their dominant position. More importantly, we're looking at things from that angle. This abuse of dominance and the fact that this TV is a dominant player in that, in that sector. There's no competition, so to speak. So whatever they do, they believe and they know that we are the competition agency in this country. They come to us, they discuss with us and give us what their views are, based on which we discuss and agree. So I don't see any reason why people will feel bad that uh, FCPC has come into it. FCPC should not come into it. Why should FCPC come into it? Once anything affects the consumer, it is our duty to come into it. Now, on the functions and power of the Commission to advise the federal government and even the National Assembly in lines with policies and its directions, recently, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, right on the Abbas, talked about enacting a bill that would make it mandatory for stakeholders in the electricity sector to sit with the House and debate upon the need to hike electricity. And if passed feed by the House, you'll be allowed to do so. Do you mm -hmm. think that is a welcome development? It's a very welcome development because stakeholder engagement is always very important. Uh, if you carry uh, customers along and they understand what your problems are, they tend to take your issues more seriously and they tend to even support you. So I believe that such engagements are very, very proper and uh, it should extend beyond just electricity. Also, maybe all other sectors. Let's have stakeholder fora and discuss these issues with the customers. 
before such issues as changes in uh, the kind of services that you give uh, or even uh, issue of price hikes have to be discussed and agreed upon. It makes a lot of sense. Now, I did also pay attention to quite the engagement on social media with Nigerians to intimate them on their rights. And it still hinged on electricity consumption. Uh, quite the documents that say uh, consumers are not supposed to pay for repairs of their transformers as well. Many Nigerians I saw responding to that post did not even know their rights as it were. I don't know if there are other plans by the commission to go on sensitization programs to Nigerians. You are talking about repairs. I'm talking about replacement. People pay for replacement of their transformers. Uh, the wires that took uh, light or the pole that takes light to a uh, uh, neighborhood falls or the wires are stolen or removed. And in the long run, you are the ones who pay. And the law says that uh, somehow, since the currency of electricity is electricity, the discourse should find a way of paying you back through the credit that you buy. If you buy 10, uh, for instance, they find a way of giving you 12 or 13 until that debt is taken care of. But don't. Uh, intervention in electricity, we have, we have done a very big job on that because we have this uh, MacArthur Foundation funding uh, that's solely for intervention on electricity. And we have traversed the length and breadth of this country doing stakeholder engagements, holding five-day sensitization exercises and sitting down along with NERC, that's a regulatory commission, NEMSA, a electricity management safety agency, our good selves, and then uh, the general public bring all your complaints. We form Dex 510 and uh, listen to complaints and resolve them there and then. So those five days are dedicated for that. We have been to almost all the zones of the country now, and we have done a very, gone a very long way in resolving these problems. And the ones that are essentially unresolvable, that we have found not to be resolvable, we have carried to headquarters, but with deadlines that this is the timeline that we have given to either DISCO or the NERC or NEMSA, the case may be, so that would uh, resolve those complaints. Uh, interventions in sectors is something that we go into almost on a daily basis. Because when we found out that uh, cost of uh, air tickets, international air tickets has gone astronomical, the investigation started from here. NCA came into it much, much later because we brought them into it. And uh, it was only through our intervention that uh, we forced the international airlines to open lower inventories so that people had access to lower rates of uh, tickets. Yes, uh, AIPs came up later on the Lagos route to do what it did. And that brought the prices uh, even lower than uh, initially. But you have noticed that the prices have come down not only on the Lagos route. And the IPs doesn't go to all these major countries like uh, continents like the US or all the countries in the EU, for instance. So it's the effort of the SBC in collaboration, of course, with the NCA that brought these prices down so that these lower inventories were opened. We do intervene. Whenever we see any uh, thing that we feel uh, needs intervention by any other sectors, and we have tried our very best to ensure us, according to our act, to go into MOUs with the sectors, because the law recognizes that sectors have regulators and expects us to work together with them through MOUs so that we resolve consumer problems. Uh, essentially, these uh, MOUs have really worked for us because it makes our jobs easier. It also makes the sector uh, regulator work easier. And we keep urging them to come into cooperation with us, work with us, and uh, we make a lot of progress that way. Also, we have uh, associations that we work with, consumer associations, CSOs, that we have registered here and uh, gone into MOUs with. We can't know it all, that's one. The monopoly of knowledge is not ours. Secondly, we can't have the competence on all things consumer and competition in Nigeria, no. Thirdly, we can't be all over the place with 300 plus members of staff or 230 plus million Nigerians. So, working with these uh, associations, with these CSOs, with uh, the sector regulators has made our job much, much easier. And lastly, talking about collaborations, I did see a call to Nigerians to fill a questionnaire online in partnership with ECHO as, as well. Could mm -hmm. you tell us a bit about what informed that decision? 
There is an ECOWAS Regional Competition Agency, ECA. So the last meeting of ECA held here in uh, Abuja, February. And one of the decisions that was reached that uh, there should be a market survey on fair market pricing. Uh, that will help uh, the region in knowing what the prices of food items are and what the distorting these factors are towards these market forces that we have been talking about. Anything competition, as I told you, uh, anything and competition is something that we frown upon. So this, uh, this market survey is essentially to find out if there are certain distortions and do something about it. But we have gone a little further by expanding our mandate so that despite the fact that we have uh, the approval of the Head of Civil Service of the Federation to open offices in all states of the Federation and Abuja, of course, due to exigencies, we cannot do that as a goal. So the best we can do is take it up uh, maybe six states per annum. And that's one per political zone starting this year. But to make things easier for us, we have also uh, now uh, talking to the states to ensure that as required by law, the whole established consumer protection agencies in their states, you see how effective Lagos is with their own. Well, La Cospa has been very effective. Kano has been very effective. Jigawa, I think uh, we just uh, guided Benue on how they do, how to do their own and their, their own course. All other states of the Federation are mandated by law to go to the House of Assemblies and uh, get this law in place so that they can establish these consumer protection agencies. That will help out greatly. We have also gone into or trying to go into some uh, MOU with NOAA, that's Niger Orientation Agency. Orientation Agency has offices in all 774 local governments of Nigeria. We believe that uh, through going into collaboration with them, we can have a little space in that office, if it's just, just a desk and a laptop. And we get, uh, even if it's uh, a copper, to be there and receive complaints on our behalf. That laptop will now be connected electrically to our main system here. We have a very robust uh, public complaints uh, portal. So once it is uh, fed into that portal, all the complaints will now come uh, straight to the portal and then the, the, the portal automatically distributes according to sector. So if it's an electricity complaint, it goes straight to NEC and the disco in question. Uh, if it is NCC, of course, it goes to the service provider as well as the sector regulator. So that will help greatly in uh, acknowledging that we, we, are, we are around and we are left to our responsibility, that's one. And it will also give Nigerians the uh, opportunity to now let the complaints straight to us and get uh, respite. Because things are happening and uh, we are not at all happy with some of the things that are going on and we believe that it's only by expanding our mandate that we can go into these marketplaces and find out what's actually going on, hear all these complaints, and resolve them. So on the call to action again, because let me borrow from the grammar as used by the commission, saving Nigerians from their Nigerianness. Mm -hmm. And many have underscored the level of patriotism, especially in light of the hiking commodity prices. How do we be more of a brother's keeper in light of this current economic action? We can only keep appealing. Unfortunately, the Nigerianness in us, as uh, you have <laughs> just mentioned, is something that has been working against us for a very long time. Because it's not only about leadership, it's also about followership. If we have a good followership in Nigeria, the leaders would have no choice but do what is right. So it is from the followership that we get a good leadership, not the other way around, most times. So uh, if, for instance, uh, you make sure that the person who represents you both at all levels, beginning from your own council, your own, your own uh, ward, to your councillor, to uh, local government chairman, all the way to your House of Assembly member, your governor, your House of Reps member, your senator, up to Mr. President. You make sure you do the right thing when it comes to voting. You make sure you vote merit and make sure the right people are in the right places. Then you are assured that there will be good governance in your country. We have a good government now. We know that the this agenda of this, this government is something that uh, has really risen our hopes. And we believe that they have the power without do what they are supposed to do and they are doing it. But they need the support of the grassroots. They need the support of these Nigerians that have always had this belief that things will never work in Nigeria. We have to have some trust in the kind of leadership that uh, we have entrusted our country to. And support them to do the right thing. It's very important. 
But more especially, we have to make sure that we keep clear consciences. Well, some things that uh, some Nigerians do, if you even think about it, you can't go to sleep. But they do it and, and they go to bed and they sleep soundly. It doesn't matter. So these are things that uh, you have to think of deeply and really advise your neighbor that these are things that are not good for the country and these are that they contributed greatly to where we are today. So the earlier we had, you think, the better for all of us. That's my advice. The acting executive vice chairman slash chief executive officer of the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, FCCPC, Dr. Adamu Abdullahi, there speaking in an exclusive interview with ADBN Television on the commission's actions to protect consumers from price gouging, cartel formations, and other sharp practices in the formal and informal market spaces in Nigeria. Listening to that interview, you can also rewatch it on our YouTube channel at ADBN Television. Well, some important issues he attended to was the current summon of the Abuja Chinese supermarket, which discriminated against Nigerians. And citing the evidence before him, uh, he has talked about the Chinese embassy also stepping into the matter owing to the rich bilateral relation between Nigeria and China and a more amicable way to settle the issue whilst also commending the National Assembly for the stance it has taken to protect Nigerians from the intended increase in electricity tariffs. He has also commended sister commissions in the likes of the Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC, for steps taken to also checkmate a hike in telecommunication tariffs as attended by telecommunication players in the industry. Well, in the coming days, we'll continue to converse and discuss on the FCPC and its determined strides in protecting consumers within the Nigerian market space, both at the supermarkets, the formal and informal market places. Now, in line with May Day celebration, the workers continue to agitate for a living wage, and with the federal government agreeing to increase 25 and 35 percent of six consolidated structures in terms of salaries and pension. Labor Congress, under the umbrellas of the NLC and TUC, are not so satisfied with these discussions. We'll continue this review of national issues of prominent concern in subsequent editions of our flagship program.